Hello again, Meg Miller, Adult Services Librarian at the Pflugerville Public Library, coming to you with another Crafty at Home Cafe. This is a summer reading edition. Uh, for this craft video, we're going to be making dried flower sun catchers. Here's my example here. Kind of cool. And again, for this, for the first 30 people who sign up through our online calendar, you'll be able to come and pick up a material supply kit. Uh, those bags will look like this. What you're going to get in there is some clear laminate, your embroidery hoop, a small package that's going to contain your dried flowers, and a suction cup hook to hang it up on a window when you're all finished. So grab your drink, let's get crafty! This is a pretty fun and simple craft. I'm actually going to be using the same embroidery hoop that I used for this original one. Um, so I'm just going to loosen the screw here at the top so that I can separate my two pieces here. And then I've got my clear laminate to work with. I'm going to set that aside for now. So I've got my embroidery hoop in its two pieces, my outer ring and my slightly smaller inner ring. Um, for the laminate, what we ended up ordering was kind of a longer version, um, and so you are going to ultimately have to trim it down um, to the size you want, but bonus, that will give you some extra laminate. If you have some flowers that you didn't use in your original design, you can make something small that you can uh, maybe use as a bookmark. Uh, we've also done dried flowers in a clear glass pendant with a little... Um, clear nail polish to attach the flowers to. Um, but really, your pieces are going to be 11 by either 18 or 20. I'm going to lay one of my pieces of laminate down in my hoop. And I'm going to put my inner ring in because I need to get a sense of where on the laminate that I'm going to be using when I put my dried flowers in. So this will give you kind of a circle that you can use when you're putting in. You don't really have to tighten too much. You see I'm already getting kind of the squish there. So now when I remove it, you can see that I have a very definite circle where my flowers can be that I know will be within the interior of my hoop. Um, so this one's pretty straightforward. We're going to lay it face down and we are going to take the bagging off and get ready to open our packet of flowers. So gently and slowly so that it doesn't fold over on itself. There we go. And so now I've got my clear laminate and I can still see where my circle lies. Okay, and now I want my little bag here of dried flowers. Each of them are taped shut just to hopefully help keep them all inside. And I'll move this over a smidge to give myself some room here. And even gently removing some of my flowers have come out from the paper. So I'm going to be very careful when I remove them from the bag so that I don't bend or break. These dried flowers are very delicate. Excellent. I, if I was a writer, I would probably be a pantser because I like to just kind of go for it. Um, if you'd like, you can also take your piece of laminate while you still have the backing on it and kind of mock up the design that you want. Um, for this, I'm gonna just kind of go for it. I have an idea. So I have some little baby's breath flowers there, a few different colored little daisies, and one or two little long ones. And bring those down. And then um, what you'll get is five of these skeletonized rubber tree leaves. We bought them in a lighter green. I just thought they were so pretty. Um, and I think that they'll really take the light beautifully. So I was thinking about this, and I think rather than go on a ring, I'm going to start on the bottom, making sure again that I'm within my circle. 
I'm just going to lay my little leaf down there, pat him down. Oh, this guy's a little folded on his corner. Let's see if I can fold him back out. A little string I'll remove there, and I'm just going to come up around the side this way. Maybe leaving some space. I have, I know I have five of these leaves to work with. Got a little bit of a fold in that particular piece of the leaf. But that's all right, it pushed down rather nicely. Leaf number three, uh, it's a little bit smaller than that guy. Uh, also a little bit smaller than that guy. This is a little closer. I think I'm going to go with this guy over here. Come up around. And one this way. Gently making sure that I am connecting to the laminate in all places and that I don't have little air bubbles underneath. That will come in handy when you do the final piece. And one more leaf here. Tapping him down gently. There we go. Oh. Thankfully that is the bottom of my laminate and not the top of my laminate. So that's just static and not actual sticking. Now one of the things you want to think about while you're placing down your um, flowers is some of these, like the little daisies, are dyed. So the back side of them is going to have a little less color than the front side. So when I did my original design, I had it this way. So I've got my lip on the inside. So you would have actually been looking through, see there are my daisies with the color. Um, I think for this one, I'm gonna put everything face down because I'd like my laminate to be at the top of my hoop um, rather than kind of in the well of it. Uh, but you can see some of them turned out beautifully. I mean, these teal ones seem to color all the way through but the little purple ones are a little bit more white on the back side, so I would want to make sure I knew which ones I was putting down um, in which direction. So this, because this is um, one of the pieces, I am going to do everything face down. Let's see, I've got my lovely little starburst baby's breath in yellow here. I'm gonna put these guys over here. One and two. Let's see. I'm going to get a little yellow at the top. A little yellow at the top. My two taller flowers, I think I'm going to place in my middle piece here. Um, now you sh you'll be getting about nine dried flowers and five of the leaves. Um, you don't have to use them all. This is your craft. You can do whatever design you want. Again, we'll be happy to see it in the comments below or tag us if you share it elsewhere. We'd love seeing those fairy gardens that you guys designed. He's tilting here. I've got two white. We'll go a little bit in a matching here on the bottom. All right, and some colors. See, I think I might leave that red one off. I might not use him. We just got a little colors here, an orange, a little purple. And maybe I will use them. Put my blue one here. And yeah, I'll put the little red guy up here. Oh. I was able to pick him up and put him right back down, but once I've placed it down, like if I try to remove these leaves, they don't do too bad. The little baby's breath, there's no way. I mean, really, if I wanted to reposition these gently as all get out, I might be able to remove them from the laminate and then maybe place it back a little bit. But again, super delicate, so you guys want to be careful. All right, so there is the first half of my design, and now we are ready for the second piece of laminate. So with our second piece of laminate, as I mentioned, they are a bit taller. Um, 
18 inches or 20 inches depending. Um, so I'm going to set my bottom piece down here for a second and I'm going to cut off the edge of what I don't need. Uh, these are one inch squares so you can actually uh, use the squares to help you count cut before you cut or you can go ahead and measure it. Alright, so for this second piece of laminate what you want to do is make sure that you are leaving a um, little bit of the bottom peeled away and not peeling the entire back off while it will be difficult to actually place down. Um, so I'm really only going to pull up using the natural want of this to curl up. I'm just going to pull up about an inch of the, the laminate and leave it there so that when I start placing it down against my bottom piece of laminate, I can actually push out any air bubbles as I go along. I'm just going to use my hands to really push down. Um, I could also use a ruler, which will be a little easier where the leaves are, maybe not so much where the flowers because they'll be a little bit more delicate. And then I'm just going to continue in that manner until I get all the way to the top of my uh, first piece of laminate and have the two pieces stuck together, smoothing the air out. As I go up, I'm going to smooth up rather than down because the air will be easier to release closer to the edge of the laminate piece number two. Now that I've got my um, two pieces of laminate stuck together with my dried flowers on the inside, I am ready to put it back into the embroidery hoop. Um, again, I'm going to take into consideration which direction I put this in the hoop because either I want to have the hoop edge around it or I want the um, laminate to be flush with the hoop itself. And I actually want it to be flush with the hoop itself this time. So I'm gonna take my design and place it in the hoop face down so that I know it gets pushed in and will be at the top of the hoop. Um, if I wanted a little bit of a, wanted that edge here, I would place it face up in the hoop. So I've got my hoop a little loosened, loosened enough there. I'm going to place my laminate on top and where I want my flowers to be fairly centered and set. All right, and then my interior ring will go back in, pushing down, making sure that I have enough on every edge. Let's see, actually I want this to come up a smidge more. There we go. All right. And this part will be fairly easy to move if I want to. One little trick that I um, have learned is if you put your fingers on the interior hoop and push down and then use your forefinger and thumb to pull up on the laminate all the way around, you'll get a much more drum-like surface with hopefully less wrinkles on the inside there. And so I usually do that right as I get it put in there. And then once I've gone all the way around, I will tighten my embroidery hoop up here, make sure I've got it tightened up some, and then I will go around and again make sure that my interior hoop is pushed all the way in snug, and then my laminate is pulled out. Tighten this a few more notches, and then we'll be ready to trim off the excess laminate. So we've got some extra pieces here that we don't need. A um, pair of scissors, we'll make quick work of that. Um, these are actually titanium, so they're a little bit better for cutting things that have stick on them. Um, if you don't have a pair like this, um, it, pretty much any scissors other than safety scissors should get the job done. Um, just gonna trim right around the whole edge. I'm just laying the scissors right along the embroidery hoop. Um, a fun bonus for this might be if you have some acrylic paints lying around or some wood stain and you want to take this unfinished embroidery hoop and give it a little pizzazz and maybe color it or stain it. Oh, I'm going the wrong direction. There we go. Just want to tighten that down and make sure it's really snug in there. All right.
and now we have my next em embroidery hoop dried flower sun catcher. I've got this awesome little suction cup hoop there and the nail, the screw right at the top makes a perfect hanging. Um, I will put this in a window and we will see how it does. Again, thanks so much for crafting with us. If you were one of the 30 people who picked up a material supply kit, when you make these, we'd love to see a picture. Uh, tag us on Instagram or share it under this video on uh, our library Facebook page. Happy crafting!